What's the word, y'all? Today, I didn't get to watch a ton of basketball live, but I did for the last couple hours go watch the things that I missed. And I will admit, watching a game after it's already completed, kind of a W, man. Fast forward through um, uh, free throws, timeouts, halftime show. And now that I already know how the game ended, I can kind of look at it from a different lens. I can, I can kind of watch the game and try to figure out how it got to that point. Yeah, overall, as far as like the anticipation or just the the beautifulness of sports is kind of out the window, but for the sake of these type of videos where I got to talk about things that I saw, watching it after it's complete, kind of a W. Now, I do want to talk about some games today or some moments of games today, but the bulk of this video, we're going to be talking about the hypothetical panic button. The hypothetical panic button, because I put it out on Twitter. Um, if you were to press a panic button on any team, who would it be? Now, I want to say this, and I want people to, to remember this as we're talking about teams. We are not actually pressing the panic button on any teams five to six games into the season. That will be dumb of us. But I do want to talk about some teams that may be underperforming a week, to, week into the season and what I see and how they can be better, okay? We are not actually pressing the button. Leave a like, subscribe if you are new. Let's get into it. All right, listen. Yesterday, I made a video where I was talking about Russell Westbrook slash the Lakers and, and giving him a praise because Russell Westbrook had his very first game as a Laker that looked really good. And then tonight, they just, everything I said in that video is void, pretty much, because tonight they was just ridiculous. Um, I was watching the beginning of this game and then it went up by 20 and I went on to do other things because I kind of assumed the Lakers are up by 20, regardless of LeBron James, they are not. They're up by 20 and not just up by 20 on any team. They're up by 20 on the OKC Thunder. It's wraps. Get that victory in on the back-to-back. Back-to-back victories is good momentum to go into the future games where LeBron James might be able to play. But they blew a 26-point lead. And again, they didn't blow it to a team that's good, competing for a playoff spot, potentially competing for a championship spot. They blew it to OKC. We talked about OKC yesterday, and we mentioned that they might win 12 total games in the season. That's how bad they had looked through the first couple games of the season. They blew a 26-point lead to a team that was struggling to put up triple-digit points all season long. A very, very ugly look. So when I saw that that happened, I, I was like, let's get it. Let's figure out how we got to this point. And, and, and I typically steer pretty neutral when it comes to Russell Westbrook. I'm not a Russell Westbrook fan. I'm not a Russell Westbrook hater. He, I, I do believe that he gets a lot of unnecessary hate for sure because it seems like the person of Russell Westbrook is a really good guy. It looks like he's a good father. He puts on for the community and those type of things. Um, but I think both sides of the Russell Westbrook coin are like super extreme. The diehard Russell Westbrook fan can't see his flaws and the, the, the hating Russell Westbrook fans can't see through his flaws to see the positives, right? And again, I typically steer right down in the middle. Today, he ended with a triple-double, counting stats immaculate. But re-watching this game, it was ugly. If I'm not mistaken, he had five turnovers going into the fourth quarter, and he ended with 10. Russell Westbrook might be the only player that I've seen with my own two eyes that is such a great, great elite-level passer but also doesn't care to take care of the ball. So many lacks of days go passes. Him trying to throw lobs to Dwight Howard that's not even looking at him. Those are the type of things we saw from Russell Westbrook today. And what was the icing on the cake for Russell Westbrook? OKC is up by like three or four with 30-something seconds to go. Sideline out of bounds for Frank, uh, Frank Vogel. And, and they drop a play where Russell Westbrook gives OKC exactly what they want, which is a open three. He is shooting like 13% from three the whole season. And he shot the ball, and it was the most dead shot that I've ever seen. And it killed their chances of winning today. Now, this loss is not solely on Russell Westbrook. Of course, it's a team thing. Because when Russell Westbrook wasn't on the floor, the whole offense was, Anthony, here's the ball, top of the key, do something. And the rest of the four people are just watching like I am from home. Standing still, no off-ball movement, and that was just a one-on-one -on -one situation with Anthony Davis and whoever's guarding him. And yes, AD is an elite-level isolation player, but that shouldn't be what the entire offense is when Russell Westbrook is not on the floor. And then when Russell Westbrook is on the floor, he's trying to over-create. <sighs> Shout out to OKC, man. They look good today. There are moments where um, Lou Dort did like a crazy in-and-out move on, on Carmelo Anthony and ended with a layup. Shagos Alexander, unstoppable. He was on the island with Austin Reeves, and you know that's barbecue chicken. I don't even know Austin Reeves like that, but I found out today, don't let him guard Shea Gills Alexander and Josh Giddy, um, pick and roll maestro. Shout out to OKC, their best game of the season. Um, all, this might be the, nah, not might be. This is the worst game for the Lakers so far this year, and I don't think it'd get any worse. LeBron, come back soon. 
because them boys need you. Would I hit the hypothetical panic button on the Lakers? Nah, they got LeBron. They'll be okay. And the, the sad part about it is everything I just said, like objectively speaking about that game, is going to get clipped and taken out of context and I'm going to be viewed as a Russ hater, which I'm just not. I'm literally not a Russ hater. Anyway, what slow starting team would you push the panic button on? And I won't go through the specific people that tweeted at me, but I'm going to go through the teams that I saw the most. The first one would be the Boston Celtics. Now, so far this year, if I'm not mistaken, the Boston Celtics are, are two and three. And you're like, Kenny, they, they won game under 500, five games into the season. Why are people saying that they should be hitting the panic button? And again, I'm not hitting the panic button on anybody, but I can understand why. I highly overestimated, overrated, maybe some of their offseason additions. Now, today, against the Wizards, shout out to the Wizards, by the way, because they've been killing it. Um, and, and they're like a the stepchild of the NBA that nobody talks about them, even if they're really good or really bad. So my apologies. Shout out to them for the, for being 3-1 and one right now, even with Bradley Beal not playing well. Spencer's been good. Montrez looks like six-man-of-the-year Montrez from a few years ago. But anyway, they lost. The, the Wizards beat the Boston Celtics today. And again, they're two and three. Dennis Schroeder had a good game today, statistically speaking. But why are people in my comment section saying that they should hit the panic button? And I think it boils down to one thing and one thing only. Or, I mean, one thing more than others. They need Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown to drop 30 each for them to win games. I, I overrated some of their additions. Again, Dennis Schroeder had a 22-piece today, and he was one of the reasons why they were in this game because Jalen Brown had a stinker. I overrated the impact that Al Warford would have on, have on his team with his playmaking and everything. If Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown aren't creating shots for themselves, nobody else on the court is really a threat. Robert Williams is a vertical threat. You can throw him some lobs. He's going to come down with it. But other than that, they don't have anything. What happened to Josh Richardson? I didn't expect him to be good this year, by the way. I had, I had fallen off the Josh Richardson bandwagon after last year. But what, how did he fall so far from grace? In Miami, he was such a good player. Part of the Jimmy Butler trade that took him to Philly, he was trash. And now he's... Yeah, if there's any reason to hit the panic button on them, is that they desperately need their two top players to be to be the best version of themselves for them to even be in these games close. And realistically speaking, you're not going to get that. Jason Tatum just is 19 years old, and Jalen Brown is just a little bit older or younger. I don't know. How old are these players anymore? So you're not going to get the overall crazy consistency from both of them every single night. They're still growing as players. So because of that, that that's probably that's one of the reasons why they went on and did the the Evan Fournier trade a couple uh, last year. Cause like we need somebody that create. We can we need somebody. And then Evan Fournier caught the virus, and then nothing was the same after that. They just don't have anything like that. They don't have anybody that could come in and create. Jabari Parker has been the spark plug off their bench this season, and I love Jabari. Shout out to my Chicagoan, but he give up every point that he scored on the court. You know, is it the end for the Boston Celtics season? No. But still, as far as contenders go or their ultimate goal, they're going to need a lot more shot creation or shot makers on this roster in the near future. The next team that I saw a lot were the Brooklyn Nets. We made a video about James Harden foul baiting and all of these type of things. And um, today they played against the Miami Heat. And I'm pretty sure it was Nate Duncan. And I know Nate, Nate Duncan. I remember when Nate Duncan was um, a meme of NBA Twitter for a whole day. What a great day that was. If you don't remember, it was the day that... that um, the, the Anthony Edwards postered Yuta, Yuta Watanabe. And of course, Twitter was on fire. Do you remember how nasty that dunk was? And Nate Duncan was like, cool dunk, but what is you shooting from three? Fun police, Nate Duncan. Um, and today, um, he put together a good trend of things with James Harden. Like, say what you want about Nate Duncan. He is a good Twitter follow uh, because he, he does watch more basketball than like 99.9% .9 of the population. But anyway, let me show you some of his tweets. So we're talking about James Harden foul baiting today. Might have been his worst version of that. Starts off right here very early in the game. Cal Lowry and James Harden tries to draw a foul. And look, 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 you see this one assistant. Look at the back of this bench. He like, what? And then he realized, oh, it's 2021. That's not a foul no more. Look, look, shot goes up. He like, what is the no call? Oh, never mind. So that was just the, that's like between the first couple possessions of the game. Instance number two, James Harden. Flailing his arms around, no call. 
instance number three is a little bit more blurry than instance number one and number two. Um, and I can't even tell you what's going on, uh, but no call. <laughs> instance number 12, James Harden, and this play has Bam Adebayo beat, but he resulted to, he resulted to trying to draw the foul. He had him beat. Now you can argue that Tyler Hero showing right here might be the reason why he went into the foul baited thing. But even if Tyler Hero is showing or he's not, you got whoever, somebody's in this corner right here. We can't see it. Somebody's in that corner right there. But instead, he tries to draw the foul, and it's not a foul this year. The course that fan was like, bro, where's the call? Not this year, my boy. And I guess Chris Paul had an instance of this too, where he dribbled his off his own foot trying to play the uh, the screen on Rashawn Holmes. And look at Rashawn with the quick quick feet and not and you know stopping in time. They lost this game too. Um, Chris Paul hasn't looked great. I'll say that. And that's my that's my favorite player. He hasn't looked great. Anyway, um, yeah. And they were asked about things, and James Harden. Um, from I. I, sometimes I feel like James Harden is being transparent when he comes to these things. And, and one of his quotes was basically talking about how he doesn't have his legs under him. And that was the thing we talked about in a video from a few days ago. He just looks out of shape and everything. But he can't watch this film and be like, oh, I'm actually bugging because he is. Tell you, KD, you got to get in your car in the parking lot at Barclays and make that call to, to re Brother. <laughs> we need you, bro. We need, we need you. Because they, they do. Um, similar thing to the Boston Celtics. They don't have a ton of creators on this team. They have a ton of players that are older. LaMarcus, Blake, Paul Millsap, who are solid players. But they all play the same position. <laughs> they literally play all, all the same, play the same position in Kyrie Irving. <sighs> Adding a guy that averages 27, 50, 40, 90 could help your team. I'm telling you. On Twitter, I, I sometimes be asking real questions. And I realize that y'all as the audience are memers. Um, so I'm seeing a lot of copy pastas, but not, but like good one, good ones though. Not like the ratio you fell off stuff. That's not funny, but like a good Raptors copy pasta. I'm down for it. Some people are saying they hit the panic, panic button on Damian Lillard. Um, which feels weird. They're two and two at the moment. I know Dame hasn't played well at all. Like even today with this win, looking at the statistics, he ended up shooting 27% from the field. Yikes. Um, but they got to win. At, if you believe that, that Damian Lillard's shots not going to come around, I don't know what to tell you, bro. Because it will. Will he be averaging 40% from the field? Maybe not. Or for, from the three-point line? Maybe not. But he is not about to shoot 27% on the season. What is he on the season? He is shooting 33% from the field. 17% from, from three. I promise you. He will be fine. I promise you. And the last team I'm seeing a ton are the Suns. I can't comment on the Suns at the moment. Because out of all of these teams that we've talked about, you know, the top-end teams that have good expectations, they're the team I watched the least of this year. So I can't tell you exactly what it is other than I know that Chris Paul isn't playing up to the standards that we want Chris Paul to play to. Um, I, I did see that DeAndre Aiden had a big game statistically, but this was one of the games that I didn't get to go back and watch. Um, I did see Harrison Barnes hit a game winner, though, so that's interesting. Uh, most improved player candidate at three years old, Harrison Barnes. Behind Miles Bridges, of course, because Miles Bridges is um, is doing his thing. I think we're going to make this video again after Thanksgiving. I think Thanksgiving is a good place because by that time, every team would have played like 20 or so games by Thanksgiving. And that's a good sample size. It's the fourth of the season. So we should come back and talk about panic buttons and then maybe we'll actually press it on some teams. If you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. What are some other teams you would hit the panic button on theoretically or not looking as good as you think they should? Um, what is the opposite of a panic button? I don't know. But let's let the Bulls hit that button, whatever it may be. Yeah, one of the three last undefeated teams, but maybe tomorrow ends that. I don't know. Oh, one last thing. Unwritten rules are stupid. That's, that's it. Thank you.